We are on day 21 of our 30-day surge of the orange line. We have less than 10 days to go. We are making good progress, and again, we are confident uh, that we will be reopening on the morning of the night of Monday, the 19th. One of the things, one of the themes we've emphasized throughout this effort is safety. We hold safety briefings every morning with each one of our work crews. You all received a safety briefing before we started this event. And I just want to thank not only the folks in the safety department at the MBTA, but everyone, MBTA employees, all the people at our contractors, our partners, who have really committed to safety throughout this. The other thing we've committed to and talked about a lot is collaboration. It's been an amazing amount of collaboration across departments here at the MBTA to make this all happen. It's been an amazing amount of collaboration with our municipal partners in order to do the type of things we need to do to provide the level of alternative service we want to provide our customer. Lastly, we talk, we've talked a lot about service. We're doing all this work so we can provide better service to our customers. We can have a safer MBTA, we can have more reliable service, and also provide a faster trip for our customers on the orange line. One of the great things we're going to be able to do when we come out of this surge is have Right now we have 60 new Orange Line cars available for service. Uh, we are continuing to work on it to get additional vehicles in there, but 60 cars puts us in a position where we can have 10 train sets uh, at certain times of the day, 10 train sets of new cars available to us. So you have the predominant uh, number of types of cars on the line are going to be new Orange Line cars. You're going to be more likely to get a new Orange Line car than, than anything else. And this is a, a great upgrade for our customers. Many of our customers have already gotten a, a new Orange Line car from time to time. There's going to be more Orange Line cars available now after the surge. We started out with 30 available before the surge started. As I said, we are currently at 60. We've doubled the amount of available cars, and we're going to continue to work to get more cars available. And I, you know, I do want to, uh, you know, give a, a, a particular thank you to both our vehicle engineering and our vehicle maintenance teams, particularly the teams here at the Wellington Garage, who have worked so hard to put us in the, this position where we can serve our customers. We've done a tremendous amount of work on the vehicles, any vehicles that had repair needs, we're addressing those needs. We've taken the opportunity to train additional staff here in the car house on servicing these cars, and we've actually accelerated the pace of inspections during this surge so that we have cars available for, uh, for the return to service. Across the entire Orange Line surge, we are two-thirds done. We're 66% done. We've currently eliminated two of the six slow zones that we have targeted. That's the slow zone between uh, Downtown Crossing and State Street, and we also addressed a slow, slow zone at Jackson Square. Uh, we are on target to address those other four sl slow zones, and I'll, uh, I'll let you know as soon as we achieve those targets. We've done 50% of the rail replacement we wanted to do, so we're at 7,000 feet. Our goal is to get to 14,000. We've done 72% of the full, uh, full track, full depth track replacement that we've targeted. So we've currently gotten 2,500 feet done. We're almost done. We've only got about 2% left of the special track work that we identified. And this encompasses a lot of different projects. Uh, you know, the ones I point out would be the Jackson crossover and the Ruggles crossover, which I know some of you saw a couple weeks ago. We're up to 55% on the Cologne eggs, uh, which I think a few people have noticed uh, has been a, a project where we've, we've really been working aggressively to make sure that we work safe, but we get as much done as we can. So we've gotten 206 of the 400 Cologne eggs, that is our goal. We've gotten 206 of those replaced. I know some of you uh, at our, our press conference on Tuesday got the opportunity to see kind of the before and after what the, the old cologne eggs look like, what the new cologne eggs look like. I think one of the things that's important for people to understand is how much pre-work it takes. It's not just pulling those, uh, those eggs out and putting a new one in. You've got, in some cases, to, to physically chip the thing out, and then you've got to rebuild the subsurface. And that's why that, that one's lagged a little bit. We're at, as, we, as I noted, we're at 55%. We're confident we're going to be able to hit our goal. Right now, we've completed 18 projects. 
Our focus throughout has been on priority projects. Uh, those are projects that address uh, track maintenance needs in particular. Right now we've gotten four of the priority projects done and we've got 14 of what we call opportunity projects done. Projects uh, where we're able, where we have time and resources to do additional work to take advantage of this 30-day closure. In terms of alternative service, uh, we I think hit our high water mark yesterday, uh, where we had uh, we had approximately uh, I'm going to be off by one or two, but we had about 190 buses in service, about 120 on the north side, 70 on the south side, providing service. Uh, I took the shuttle home last night myself. Uh, you know, I think with the post Labor Day, we've seen an uptick in traffic. Obviously, have students. We've had students return on the north side of the line. Previously, uh, the bulk of the students in the Boston area, bulk of the students in the Boston area returned yesterday. We also saw really challenging traffic conditions, a uh, combination of additional people on the roads, a couple major incidents, and a couple major events in Boston. So uh, I would say yesterday was our most challenging day running that alternative service. Uh, any The end-to-end the -end runs were anywhere from 45 minutes to 60 minutes. We're seeing lighter ridership today. We're seeing lighter vehicle volume. So the times have improved today, but obviously that's something we're going to continue to monitor. Uh, we had a number of students, uh, 25,000 K through, uh, excuse me, grade seven through 12 students return to school yesterday in Boston. Uh, I spent some time at Forest Hills uh, trying to help people understand where they need to go, what paths of uh, what paths of travel were available to them. We had a full complement of MBTA volunteers, uh, ambassadors, uh, MBTA ambassadors, as well as a number of volunteers from the Boston Public Schools out guiding students helping them get where they, they needed to go. So I think in general, that went pretty well. Uh, you know, I think there were obviously uh, a handful of hiccups, but we were able to address many of those and have not gotten any significant reports this morning of any, any major problems on day two. As always, uh, encourage people to check out our website for information, mbta.com slash bbt 2022. We do have a student guide that is tailored to the needs of students on how to travel uh, on the system right now with the closures in place. To the extent that there's uh, issues or changes in the schedule, again, please track our social media and continue to, continue to monitor the website if you need any additional information. So with that, I will close and I'm happy to answer any questions. Sure. Uh, you know, there's been uh, there's been some issues where we've we've made the decision to to pull these cars out of service, uh, given our limited given our limited experience with these vehicles. We pulled them out of service to make sure that we've addressed them in the lot. So we've addressed them for the long term. We've been able to do that. We've been able to mitigate any of the issues we've found. You know, one of the points I really emphasize here is this is a generational investment for the MBTA. We are purchasing 404 vehicles from, from the plant in Springfield. We are not only replacing every single vehicle on the red and orange line, but we're actually increasing the number of vehicles uh, so that we, have, we can provide additional service to customers down the road. So uh, we have made the decision that we want to do everything we can to make sure that if there's any issues that arise, we address them, we address them in a comprehensive, systemic way that emphasizes safety. So we believe we've addressed, uh, we, we know we've addressed all of the issues that have occurred before. Um, we've, also, we've also changed our vehicle acceptance process so that we're able to catch some of these issues earlier rather than later. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. I believe we topped out at five or six trains, maybe before the um, we before the surge started. There are a handful of instances where we had six trains. We have the ability to do ten trains. We may 
that may that number it's not going to be 10 trains all the time that number may go up and down but the vast majority of trains out on the line will be new cars going forward and yes it will it will exceed the previous amounts I am yes You know, I think by and large, most of the projects have gone very well. We've had a handful. Um, it's, it's, it's decided to rain again uh, here in New England, which is welcome overall. But uh, we've had a couple projects where we've had to delay roofing a day or two. Um, I think the, the Cologne egg piece of it, uh, there was a, definitely a learning curve in terms of us understanding just how challenging the, uh, the site conditions were and what work needed to be done. The team, both at our, with our contractor and our internal teams, has really done an amazing job of figuring out what the solution is and how can we get this work done. What happens to the They'll be scrapped at some point in time. They'll be scrapped at some point in time. Mark has informed me yeah, on the 19th uh, we'll be scrapping about 20 cars. The company was Costello that won the bid. Costello. You're asking about the alternative service. Not really. Uh, you know, I think we are. We're monitoring traffic conditions. Uh, you know, I think we've 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 checked in with kind of our traffic. Uh, you know, our police details to make sure that they're uh, that they're operating effectively. But we think we have we think we have the best possible route. Uh, it's obviously not perfect, and traffic increased traffic provides an increased challenge. Uh, you know, my sense from, uh, you know, a non-scientific review of social media last night that uh, there were a lot of people stuck in traffic, that uh, traffic was quite bad in, in, in your personal vehicle as well. So I think we're seeing kind of a, an adjustment phase as more people are taking trips post Labor Day. That's going to take a little while to work through. The shuttle buses will go away. We intend to run service. Yes, the demonstration project that we're introducing uh, was funded in this year's state budget, uh, so it'll be a two dollar and forty cent fare uh, to take to take the ferry from Lewis Wharf over to Boston. So you know we're pleased to uh, we're pleased to introduce that service. It's obviously uh, it was one of I think one of the surprises of the Blue Line surge, the level of popularity. Uh, I think with very little advance notice and very little promotion, I think we topped out at about 2,000 passengers on its best day. So, you know, we look forward to introducing it and also uh, getting additional data to see what the level of interest is in this demonstration project on an ongoing basis.